All right, so early in the morning, day two at the Amsterdam Street Photography Workshop. So Thomas, how are you feeling? A bit tired. A bit but tired? It's, but it's okay. Okay. Hey, show us, show us your shirt. <laughs> hey, do, you said there's a back? There is a back, but that's not a... <laughs> Wait, let me, let, me, let me take a look, let me take a look. Show, show me the back. <laughs> oh, this is pretty good. Like on my ass. <laughs> Alright, so, um, so I'm just going to do a quick interview. So uh, for those of you, the people out there who may not know, why don't you tell us the story of how we got to know each other. It was in August 2010. We were, I was getting uh, a newsletter from Digital Photography School where Eric had a uh, an entry, a guest entry, or get guest post about street photography, so I read everything, I bookmarked his blog, and about yeah. a month later, he just asked for donations for a uh, trip to Beirut to teach street photography. And the, the amount he needed was about $800, so I was uh, thinking, why not help this guy? with the just one requirement that I can join him. <laughs> <laughs> good deal, good deal. <laughs> so I thought this could be the deal. I sent him an email telling him, OK, I pay you the money, but I just would like to join you to Beirut. And mm -hmm. that's how we both got to Beirut, gave our first workshop together. Mm -hmm. And it was the trip of my life, I think, or one of my trips of my life. I met a lot of people. I met uh, the Beirut street photographers which uh, were founded at that time together of this workshop and since then we gave both a lot of workshops eric traveled around the world i traveled around europe and uh, yes now we got we met again about the third time last mm -hmm. year you S were in zurich mm -hmm. with me with mm -hmm. a workshop so tell us um about your recent uh, talk and photo walk at uh, google yes. in uh, zurich i had a guy in one of my workshops from google he was, uh, yes, he was following me for a certain time and then some guy at Google wanted to make a, fo a photo walk, so they were looking for a photographer and then he said, I know Thomas, and uh, they asked me if I could do that in Zurich. Mm -hmm. So I organized the Google photo walk with uh, about 130 people. So we just went out in Zurich in the street shooting for uh, three different uh, topics like street photography, Cityscape and motion, and uh, everything was sponsored by Google. You could win three cameras in each category. One people were really uh, amazed that something like this happened in Zurich. Uh, I met a lot of people mm -hmm. I only knew from online, from uh, social media, and it was a fun event. And everybody asked when is the next one, but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we will see. So Thomas, you have a, a quite unique approach in uh, street photography and life. So you've written three books on street photography. You let people download your images full resolution from your Flickr as long as you they credit you. Um, why do you? Oh, why are you so open with uh, your knowledge and why do you give away for free? Why don't you just charge a buck? And how many? You got over a hundred thousand downloads on some of your ebooks. Why don't you just charge a buck and um, you know? Uh, first of all, when I would charge for them, although it would just be one dollar, there would not be so many downloads. It will be much more difficult to to sell it because you need somebody who, who does it for a web page, whatever, they would also take something. So in the end, it would not, I would not get a lot of it. And of course, for me, the money is not essential. I work in a full-time job in IT, which brings me enough money where I earn enough money to, to live my life in a, yes, I have everything I need. And I learned one day that more money would not make me happier or would not make better photos I probably could buy a better camera but this also <laughs> doesn't make better photos mm -hmm. so I decided I would like to make this available to everybody mm -hmm. since street photography is something quite affordable or should be affordable you just need a camera go out and shoot and the knowledge should be available for free as well mm. the same with my photos I will and don't think that a lot of people would hang out the photos I take in the streets in the living room, for example, <laughs> a face from a, an old lady mm -hmm. or an old man 
is not that interesting to hang mm. up in the living room. So I, I forgot, or I, th I thought it's not really worth to, to sell them. So it's. Mm. Uh, S mm -hmm. So um, a lot of the street photos you take in the street are, you know, portraits of people. What do you say to people who say street portraits of people isn't street photography, or what you preach isn't street photography, or people who just generally uh, don't agree with your your approach? In the end, I don't care how it's called. It's something I like to do. I'm interested in people. I would like to go close. I would like to see their eyes from a close distance, see their motion. I don't ask them. I just go there and shoot. They look sometimes frightened, sometimes surprised. And I like this look. And uh, if it's called street photography or portraiture or whatever, I actually do not care about it. It's just what I like to do and I do it. And if people like it, they should look at it. If they don't like it, they should continue clicking. There are enough photo photos to look at. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people when they're shooting the streets uh, they're quite uncomfortable and have a lot of difficulty approaching strangers. You probably have balls of steel. <laughs> how do you, uh, how do you, how do you over, or you said you've never really had a fear, or what are, what are some advice you'd give to people who want to get more comfortable shooting the streets? In the end, it's just a personal thing. It's at the beginning, I sometimes had some fear. But there are also days I don't really can get that close, but in the end, I know that normally nothing happens. So you just go there, press the button, continue walking, and if there is something, they will tell you. They will come after you, they will <laughs> talk to you, they will ask questions, but this happens very, very seldom. So it's mm -hmm. it's just uh, a way you have to learn to get over this fear, and then you realize that it's not a problem. Mm. So what do you say to people who say, oh, you need a really expensive camera, or oh, you need a full frame, or oh, you need a Leica, or anything like that? What do you tell them? They should start making photographs and stop caring about the camera. I have yeah. just a very, s no, no, very, very simple. It's a quite a good camera, but it's not that expensive. And with that, I can do everything I want. And I think there's nothing more you need. It's just a normal Micro Four Third camera, not even a big sensor. It's even smaller than the normal uh, DH uh, DSLR cameras. But it does the job. It has a good lens. It's uh, quite small, they don't see me on the street, so they, they recognize, don't recognize me as a photographer. And they, see, they think that I am a tourist, and that's, uh, that's the best thing. All right, and um, what are some places you would like to travel to? I think I would like to travel to India one day, because uh, it's quite interesting, quite different culture, and a lot to see. But I think other places like, I don't know, there is uh, maybe Cuba, I have to go to New York again, I will go to Beirut, I will travel wherever I need to. Alright, thank you very much Thomas. Thank you. And then workshop's about to begin.